you just say what the target information okay. is. What's the topic? The topic is uh, the two parties that were dominant at the time following the American Revolution, which were the Federalists and the Democratic Republicans. Okay. All right. So, uh, first of all, the Federalists, they were mainly headed by uh, Alexander Hamilton and John Adams, and the most popular area for them was the New England area. Uh, George Washington was almost like an unofficial member of the Federalist Party. Their main focus was a strong national government with a focus on uh, businesses and their rights. They had more of a loose interpretation of the Constitution, whereas they focused on the Elastic Clause, which gave Congress and uh, the executive branch powers that weren't specifically outlined in the Constitution. And as far as foreign policy was concerned, they were very pro-British. Um, the next party, the Democratic Republicans, they were mainly headed by uh, Thomas Jefferson and James Madison, and they're more popular in the South and the West areas of the U.S. Um, they had a very strict interpretation of the Constitution, where powers not outlined in the Constitution were not allowed. It was very uh, strict, I guess. And uh, they had much more of a uh, focus on states' rights and the rights of farmers and a uh, much smaller national government. And their foreign policy, they were much more uh, aligned with the French. And then uh, further research I did found that Thomas Jefferson, even though he was part of the Democratic Republicans and they had strict interpretation, he authorized the uh, purchase of Louisiana Territory, which wasn't outlined in the Constitution, but he did it anyways. And George Washington, following his uh, farewell address, he condemned political parties. He did? Yeah. All political parties? Yeah, he said political parties were bad for the system. Huh. Which, you know, he's not wrong. What's that? He's not wrong, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think there'd be some people that might disagree yeah. with you, but, uh, okay, so essentially you, you had this memorized in, uh, after you drew the, the map, you mm -hmm. had it memorized in approximately 20 minutes? Oh, easily. What is your third point about the Democratic-Republican Party? Third point? Uh, the fact that they had a loose interpretation of the Constitution with, an with focus on the Elastic Clause. Yeah. It's powerful, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> could you tell us all of the points backwards? You don't have to do it, but could you do it? Yeah, definitely. You just walk backwards? So just walk backwards just through the rooms. Yeah. So you know, you know it backwards and forwards. Oh, yeah. All right. Very good job. You ready, Casey? Uh, yeah. Do you mind if I look at this as I'm saying it, though, because it's pretty... You did start really late. You only had, like, maybe 10 minutes, I think. Uh, and I did work on it last night, because... Yeah, <laughs> so uh, you, uh, you can uh, have your finger in it. I want you to close the book and try to do it without it, but if you really have to look, um, you can open it and glance at it. Um, now keep, Casey, keep your mind tightly focused. If you need to close your eyes to go to the place, you can do that. Okay. What's um, your topic? Very good. As if it were a scene made up by the mind that is not mine, but is a made place that is mine. <clears throat> it is so near to the heart. An eternal pasture folded in all thought so that there is a hall therein. There is a made Created place. Created by the thought. Go ahead. There is a made place created by light where from the shadows of all forms fall, or that our forms fall, where from fall all architectures I am. I say our likenesses of the first beloved whose flowers are flames lit to the lady. She is the queen under the hill whose hosts are a disturbance of words within words that is a field folded. It is only a dream of grass blowing east against the setting of the sun and an hour before the sun's going down, whose secret we see in a children's game of ring around roses told. Often I am permitted to return to a meadow as if given property from the mind. As if it that were a given property of the mind. As if it were a given property of the mind that certain
heart and bounds hold against chaos. That is a place of first remittance. Everlasting omen of what is. Yeah. That it was amazing. It's very difficult. That is an extremely difficult poem to, to memorize. It does not have regular rhyme or meter, um, unequal line lengths, and there are it looks almost like there are repetitions of lines, but they really aren't repeated. They're different each time, and so it's extremely complicated. It's also very abstract, and so you don't have concrete images to hold on to. Um, how many minutes altogether did it take you to memorize that poem? I probably spent more like an hour. An hour. Okay. Does that include the drawing? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, just for the sake of the record, can you show the drawing? Uh, your floor Very plan. Artistic. Yep. Good. All right. You ready to go? Yep. Keep your mind. All right. If you need to close your eyes to go where you're going, you can do that. What's your topic? My topic is under economics and it's involving a monopoly market. Okay. <clears throat> so there's a monopoly market and it's structured by three different categories. The first one is that there's a single seller and that seller can be in any kind of market. They can sell anything from chairs to phones to tables or whatever. And they generally have a unique, yeah, a unique uh, product. It can be whatever they, but the point is that they're the only seller selling that product. And it's almost impossible, or it is impossible for anyone else to enter that market. And the reason is there are three more categories under the impossible entry. The first is that there is a vital resource owned by that single seller, um, whatever it could be. It could be land, uh, rights to resources that they find anywhere, or even, um, what are they called, patents on certain, on their product. Uh, those are then legalized by, say, the government or any, or the fact that they own the land. Nobody else can get it, so it's also impossible for them to enter that through legal barriers. And also the economies of, of scale. And that is, the economies of sale is the idea that one seller can sell their product at a lesser per unit price than say three or four sellers. So say if, Oh, Meyer was the only store around, they're able to sell their product at a lower price than say if you had Meyer, Walmart, Aldi's, and Costco all competing for the same product. That's yeah. amazing. Is yeah. there more? No, there's oh. no more, but I was just going to say that I have to know all these different market structures, and there are four of them. And that's so, one? And, yeah, and that's just one. So I kind of, mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to have different palaces for each one yet, or just make one really big palace for You might want to talk to your classmate, James, who's not here today, because he, uh, I, I had a conversation with him at the beginning of the semester about this technique, and he's been using it in anatomy and physiology, which requires an enormous amount of memorization, and he has one palace with multiple floors. So you might have a four-story building um, that could work, or four wings, but yeah, I'd keep it in one building. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Very nice job. Just randomly, let's see, what is your seventh point? The economies of scale. Good. Very good. <laughs> and um, somebody in the glare over there. Mine, um, it's more simple, they're congregation charts. Okay. But in Spanish. Time, yeah. Every time before a test, I'd have to like write them down super quick and try to remember. And I, I had the hardest time, yeah, remembering which chart to use for each one. Mm -hmm. So, my first one are just present tense for AR and ER verbs, and it's O, AS, A, AMOS, AIS, and AN. And then for ER, it's O, S, A, EMOS, AIS, N. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm nervous. That's all right. Keep your mind. And then for the reflexive verbs, you have to use may, te, lay, nos, os, and lace. And then for preterite, irregular, you have to remember ie, e to ie, o to ue, and when to use a personal a. And then for preterite, irregular, it's the 
same rule and for preterite verbs. I can't remember some of this. No, thing. just <laughs> keep your mind, do a clearing breath if you want to. On the preterite verbs, it's O, este, as, amos, astais, eo, and for er and er, ir and er, it's um, e, este, eo, emos, estais, and earon. And that's all I have to remember. <laughs> that seems like quite a bit. How many tables was that? Charts? Um, six. six. And I had a test the yesterday. That's why I picked that. And I got an A. Plus and I didn't have to do the cheating right before, like memorizing a bunch. I remembered it from that. I am so proud of you. That is just Less, music to I, my I'm ears. I'm not <laughs> as nervous on that. I could, I could have told you, like, not shaky, but the camera makes me nervous. Of course it does. It would make me nervous, too. So um, just uh, randomly on the second chart, um, how many rows are there? There's six. There's three. Give me the fourth row of the second chart. Lay. That's all? Okay. Perfect. You didn't do this. Yeah, I have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> okay. Um, mine isn't as much, but it's six forms of contrast. Um, we're talking about type. Type, yes. Yes, as in fonts. Yes. So six <clears throat> different types of font. The first one is size, so that's um, obviously the size of the font and how big you want it to be. And then there's the weight, and that can be um, the density of the paragraph. So like how little the font is and how big the paragraph can be with littler font than with bigger font. And then we have um, the structure. And the structure um, represents like you can have a different font for each line in a paragraph. So it can, the paragraph can look really goofy because it can have bunches of different font in each line. And then you have the form in that. I call it ending with a bang because you could say I really don't like and then this person in all bold caps and that just adds um, some like bang to the paragraph mm -hmm. and then there's direction and that's what um, the, you want the margins to be if you want it to be a left margin or a right margin or a middle and then it's also the direction vertically and horizontally yes yes and then there's the color of the font and mm. that's just whatever color you want the wording to be mm -hmm. but you'd like it to contrast right yes. you don't want necessarily well, you probably don't want purple next to a, a blue purple. Yeah, and you okay. want it to contrast, like if you have black and then you have a big red word or something. Exactly, very good. And this was a topic that <coughs> I actually gave you <laughs> maybe a third of the way into the exercise. Yeah. You had absolutely no idea where it was coming from. It's not in your uh, field at all. No. <laughs> and it was just a random thing. And there were no notes with it either. No, I think I maybe took like yeah, 10 minutes to memorize all of that. Uh -huh. Very good. It's good design information. Yeah. So do you, do you remember the six kinds of type? The, the six forms? Yeah, the, okay. the first group of six. Um, Old style. I didn't look over that. You didn't get that? Yeah. Okay, all right. that's fine. Good job. Okay, I didn't have time to map it or anything because I switched topics, remember, from when oh. we did it and I switched over. So I don't have any of this mapped, but I kind of know it in my head so I can But you have, some of it. is it connected to a place? Yeah, it's connected to the cottage that I told you about. That's right. Okay. And the topic is? Um, the way blood moves through the heart. Right. So how many minutes did you have all together? Like five. Five minutes. <laughs> and I didn't have time to draw it out or anything. So okay, my, that's so, fine. But, yep. okay. Um, blood enters the heart through the inferior and superior um, vena cava, and it goes into the right atrium of the heart. And when the atrium contracts, it goes into the right ventricle, and then it leaves the heart through the tricuspid valve. And that's all I know. That's pretty good. Could you draw this on the board? You mean like a diagram? how it moves through the palace? No, the or heart. Possibly. Possibly. Okay. Just <laughs> curious. I'm not asking you to do it. Yeah. All right. Good job. For five minutes, that's pretty amazing. And your field is 
baking and pastry. Yes, it has nothing to do, <laughs> nothing to do with, with anatomy and physiology, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very good, Hannah. I did uh, formulas for electrical currents on how to do everything. All right. Um, first uh, equation is Q equals N times E. Q is total current or total charge, and is number of charges. E is fundamental charge. Next is electrical current. That's I equals Q divided by delta T. I is electrical current. Um, Q is number of charges or uh, power of charges. Delta T is no, uh, time. Then there's voltage. Is that, it just time? Yes. Delta T is just time? Yep. Okay. Number of seconds. Okay. Then there's um, voltage and that's V equals IR. That's current times resistance equals voltage. Mm -hmm. And there's power. P equals IR or IV and that's in, uh, electrical current times power or uh, time zone voltage I'm sorry. there we go current times voltage good times power good all right um, can you do a problem um, Let's say you have, um, let's see, I want you to tell me um, current in relation to volts and, is it resistance? Yes. So uh, 100 volts, resistance is 100 ohms. The one ohm per volt. So how much current? One. One? Amp? Yes. Is it measured in amps? Okay, very good. How long did you spend memorizing these formulas? About 10, 15 minutes. I've had a hard time with this. So. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> okay, very good job. Excellent, you guys.